by a show of hands, I want to know who in here has had a has faced an obstacle in their life. Everyone. So it seems like a lot of us have faced obstacles, right? So it's not a matter of will we face an obstacle. It's more about how do we overcome these obstacles. As Tori said, I had a stroke when I was 19 years old. So this was the greatest obstacle I'd ever faced. So how did I go about overcoming this? I feel like it starts by taking the first step. Overcoming any obstacle starts by taking the first step. Now I grew up a healthy athlete playing all different sports, soccer, basketball, baseball. But after having this stroke, I lost it all like that. Snap of a finger. So what did I do? I made it up in my mind. I took the first step. I was going to get back out into the basketball court. I was going to do whatever it took. Now, like I said, having a stroke was the hardest thing I'd ever gone through. My dad happened to be reading an article one day by a woman named Jane Goodall, who studies animal behavior. And Jane Goodall said that we humans always find reserves of strength and courage to overcome that which faith throws our way. So the question is, where do I find my strength and courage? Now, I was really fortunate. I had great family, friends, teammates, coaches. But there was one thing that kept me going on a daily basis, a little energizer bunny inside of me. When I felt like I was about to quit or on the verge of giving up, there was one thing that kept me going, and that was basketball. As you can see here, from a very early age, I had a basketball by my side. It was my best friend. It really was. If I was ever stressed out, I can go outside and just shoot around for hours. It was my safe haven. But more importantly, aside from it just being my best friend, basketball taught me a lot about hard work. When I was younger, I heard a quote by a basketball coach named John Wooden. Sorry. He said that nothing will work unless you do. Nothing will work unless you do. Now, this could be applied to anything. No matter what your goals are in life, no matter what obstacles you're facing, nothing will work unless you do. In my situation, I wanted to be the best basketball player I possibly could. So that's what I applied it to, was basketball. So I knew I had to make sacrifices if I wanted to be good. So anytime my friends my age were outside playing, or inside playing video games, watching TV, watching movies, I was outside. I was working on my game, because I wanted to be the best basketball player I possibly could be. And as Tori said, it led to a very successful high school career in which I scored over 1,000 points. Now this was a great individual achievement, but more importantly, it gave me the opportunity to play basketball in college. And I went to Gettysburg College. But my freshman year at Gettysburg, I found myself in a different situation, something I wasn't used to. I was sitting on a bench, not getting in any games. So that's somewhat of an obstacle, right? I, I wasn't happy with that. By the end of my freshman year, I made it up in my mind. I took the first step. I'm going to work harder this following spring and summer than I had ever worked in my entire life. No matter what, I was going to come back in my sophomore year and be the starting point guard. I worked harder that following spring and summer than I ever worked in my entire life. I really did. But it wasn't to be a better basketball player. It was really just to learn how to walk again. And I have to take you back to March 26, 2009. It was a rainy Thursday that I'll never forget. I know I was lifting weights with my friend and my teammate when out of nowhere I get this piercing headache. I felt like I got stabbed in the head. It took me by surprise. I had to sit down. I took a couple minutes off. Uh, but when the headache didn't go away, I figured, all right, I'll get back up, keep lifting. Hopefully, it'll go away after a while. So I walk up to the dumbbell rack. I lift one up with my right hand. All right, no problem. Then I go to lift it up with my left hand, and it doesn't budge. I thought there was something wrong with the dumbbell. I did. So I called my friend over. I said, Brendan, come here, man. Check, check this out. I think there's something wrong with the dumbbell. So he comes over. He lifts it up. And it seemed like there was nothing wrong with it. But at that time, there was something wrong with me. The weight room was swirling around me, so he grabs me. We start walking outside into the hallway. We get some water, and things were just getting worse. I was having a hard time following him, following conversations. So we start walking to the athletic training room. And we could tell things are bad, all right? So we're trying to rush to get there. About halfway to the athletic training room, my leg starts to give out. Now, I remember the last vivid image I have of that day, March 26, 2009 was getting to the athletic training room doors. My arm was around Brandon, and my left leg was completely dead, and I just saw my toes dragging behind me. I'll never forget that image. Now I'm, on the, now I'm in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, and I, I see there's an EMT at the foot of the stretcher, and there's one behind me. And they're saying, OK, Corey, take, you know, relax. You're going to be OK. Just stay with us, buddy. 
And then the one at the foot, the foot of the stretcher says, get him a bucket, he looks like he's gonna vomit. Now I saw the bucket, but I mean, I've always been like a jokester, so I, instead of vomiting in the bucket, I decided why not just vomit all over myself, take advantage of, <laughs> of my opportunity. And I have to take you back for a second. In high school, I played in a student versus faculty flag football game. And all of us students who played in the game put nicknames on the back of our shirts. Now I decided to put Mr. 1000 since I'd scored over 1,000 points. Ironically, I was wearing this shirt the day of my stroke. Okay, so picture this. Mr. 1000, the single greatest individual achievement of my entire life. And it took a matter of seconds for the EMTs to cut that shirt off, and just like that, that Mr. 1000 was gone. That quarry that I worked for 19 years to become, everything that I'd been through was gone, never to be seen again. Now they ended up getting me to the hospital where they found out that I indeed did have a stroke. And this is a tough picture to look at, but this is actually me smiling. You can see that the left side of my face is a little droopy. I was born with an abnormal, abnormal blood vessel in my brain that hemorrhaged and it paralyzed the left side of my body. Now I spent 10 days in the hospital and then they sent me to an, an inpatient rehab facility called Kessler uh, in New Jersey. And my time at Kessler was very interesting, it was. It was filled with highs and lows. Some of the highs was I was seeing improvements on a daily basis. And I mean, I was wheeled in, the left side of my body paralyzed and every day able to move my hand a little bit more, my leg a little bit more, so this was very encouraging. And I have a video here of, the, of me moving my arm at Kessler. And you can see it's not much, but this was a great improvement for me. I was able to lift it a little bit. And you can see here I can start to do a bicep curl. Now, give me a good bicep. That's my mom. And, you know, so this is a great improvement, all right? Now, not only were there improvements, though, uh, I had a lot of downtime at Kessler. So I did, I, I was a little bit upset. In between my therapy sessions, all my friends and family, they all worked. So they couldn't spend a lot of time with me, so I was just left in my room by myself. And I told one of my friends this. I said, man, it's really tough, you know. I, I have no one to talk to. He said, you should keep a journal. He used it as a stress relief. So I kept a journal. And on every single page in that journal, there's a line like this about basketball. If I ever want to play basketball again, I know I have to put in hard work. All right, because remember, this was my first step. No matter what, I was going to get back out onto the basketball court. Now, what was that? That was my motivation, right? And I was fortunate at Kessler. There was a basketball hoop outside. So this was me. This is what kept me going from day one. I was going to get back out onto the basketball court. I promise I was able to dribble a lot better than that before I had the stroke. Otherwise, I wouldn't be playing in college. All right, so again, that was, my, that was it. That was my motivation, basketball, that kept me going. Just over a month at Kessler, and it was time to go home. And I had to continue my therapy at home. And I worked hard, you know, I wanted to get back to school. Now September comes around, it's time to go back to my sophomore year. And I'm excited to get my life back on track. But unfortunately, things didn't go as smoothly as, as I would have liked. When I got back to school, I felt awkward in front of my friends. I was struggling academically, but worst of all, I couldn't play basketball. I couldn't do a single drill in practice. So this was me at practice. My team out there, and I was on the side, shooting alone all by myself. I'm not going to lie to you. I was extremely depressed at this time. I was crying on a daily basis. I never thought about giving up, but I was crying on a daily basis. I, hit, I had hit rock bottom. But I do have to show you a quote out of a, a journal, uh, out of a poem that I wrote. You can't see it here, but it says, feeling this pain, this hurt deep inside, but hard work I knew would turn the tide. You see, I was at rock bottom, but I knew that the pain I was experiencing was temporary. It's the quitting that would have lasted forever, and there was no quit in me. So that sophomore year, I continued to stay with the team, and I said I was gonna help in any way possible. I was gonna help in any way possible, and in my spare time, though, I was doing therapy. I wanted to get better, all right? I wanted to get back out onto the basketball court. There was nothing that was going to stop me. Okay, so here, this is me running for the first time. Take a look at this. 
This, again, just shows my hard work paying off, right? And there's nothing that was going to get in my way. I was going to get back out onto the basketball court. So I even built on this. I started to dribble a basketball while I was running and do some layups. I went back to school junior year, and I was like, all right, great. I'll be out with the team. I'll be warming up before games. Maybe I'm not ready to play, but I'll at least be warming up. And I was. In practice, I was doing layup lines with the team. But the night before our first game, my coach came over to me and he said, Corey, I really admire everything you've been through. You've made such tremendous strides. You've been working so hard. I just don't think you're quite ready to get out there with the team yet before games. I'll tell you, this was a, this was a blow. This was a tough one to swallow. But there's a quote that I really like by Rocky Balboa. It says that life ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. And that's so true. All that was was a little roadblock in my way, a little obstacle. He said I wasn't ready, so what did I do? I had to prove him wrong. I got to work, and this was me, junior year. While everyone else might have been inside watching TV, this was me. I was working, and again, you could see my improvements. All right? My hard work was paying off. That's all of junior year. I still had it in my mind. I was going to get back out onto the basketball court. Now, after that full year of therapy, Here's another video for you it comes, uh, of my hard work paying off. This was me before I go back to school uh, my senior year. And you can see I'm dribbling a lot faster. And you can see that I'm, I'm almost ready to get back out into the court, or at least that's what I thought. Now, for any of you basketball fans out there, you're very lucky. This is a free shooting lesson. I won't charge, I won't charge you a dime for that. All right, there you go. So you can see, again, my hard work's paying off. Now I'm ready to go back my senior year. And I'm out there with the team. I'm warming up with them. I have my jersey on, my warm-ups. All right, and I'm going through layup lines and shooting drills, and I'm excited, all right? This is one step closer towards my final goal. But my ultimate goal was to get back out onto the court, and I still hadn't done that. The whole year was going by, and I hadn't, hadn't gotten back out onto the court. But then the night before our final game, our senior game, one of my co-captains called me and said, Congrats, Corey, you're starting tomorrow. And I'll never forget that. I remember I was sitting in my car on my phone, and I get this news that after three years, the blood, the sweat, and tears that I had put into it, he told me that tomorrow I was going to achieve my goal. I was going to get back out onto the basketball court. Couldn't stop crying. But they were tears of joy, all right, tears of triumph. So I had to go home, get a good night's sleep. Tomorrow was a big day. So now it's game day. I'm sitting on the bench, I'm waiting for my name to be called on the loudspeaker. And that's something that I took for granted. I heard it hundreds of times in high school. Um, but on that day, it was special. All right, when I heard starting at point guard, number three, Corey Weissman, I got chills down my spine. I did. Now, I wasn't ready to fully play in the game, so the coaches came up with a plan. The ball was going to be thrown up for the jump ball, and whoever got the opening tip would roll the ball out of bounds, and I'd be subbed out. And that's what happened. Jump ball, the other team got the ball, and he actually handed it to me, so I took a dribble, and I rolled it out of bounds. That's it. Kid has a stroke, left side paralyzed, he made his mind up, he was going to get back out onto the court, and he did it. All right? It's a great ending to the story, but it didn't end there. It didn't matter if I played 40 minutes or three seconds. It didn't matter. I had accomplished my goal. Like I said, it didn't end there. So with a minute left to go in the game, my coach asked me if I wanted to go back. He said, we were up by about 20 points. He said, Corey, you want to go back in the game? I said, yeah, of course. So I go back in, and this is great, because this wasn't planned at all. And I'm, up, I'm out there, I'm running, I get the ball a couple times. And then with 20 seconds left to go, the other coach calls a timeout. And he tells the team to intentionally foul me to give me a chance to go to the free throw line and score my first point. We were in the double bonus. So I get the ball, I get fouled. I'm running down the court. And I'm not going to lie to you, I was nervous. I had never really thought that I was going to have a chance to score after having the stroke. All I wanted was to get back out onto the court. So I was nervous. I get up to the free throw line, I get the ball, I go through my routine. Got butterflies. I come up a little bit short. Now this next video, the most confident free throw I've ever taken in my entire life. I knew that after the three years of hard work, that I would just get the ball, all right? All I had to do was just go through my routine, put it up, and this is what would happen. Get your leg, you can show it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
There's another fish shooting lesson for you guys. All right, thank you. Thank you. So there you go. There's your storybook ending. There's your storybook ending. Even hits a free throw. And yes, I decided to miss the first one for dramatic effect because I, <laughs> I knew I would make the second one. No, so this, this actually started to get some media attention. Started to get some local newspapers and magazines around the Pennsylvania Gettysburg area. Um, and then it had somewhat of a snowball effect. Next thing I know, Yahoo Sports, ESPN reached out. I was in Sports Illustrated. I was actually in Sports Center Top 10, number 10. I thought I should have been higher, but I can't, I can't complain. Um, so my friends are all getting really excited, dude. Just wait, they're gonna make a movie about your story. Guys, listen, it's really cool, everything that's going on, but there's not gonna be a movie. Now, all the students from uh, Auburn Middle School happened to see the movie today. It's called A Thousand to One, the Corey Weissman story, and it's starring David Henry, and uh, Bo Bridges is in it, and there's a bunch of good actors, and the movie's great. It does a good job telling my story, the highs and lows of my story. Um, it's available on Netflix, iTunes, Amazon. Now, all this media attention, it was great. Seeing myself in Sports Illustrated and all that was great. The best part, though, the Facebook messages that I've been getting from people all over the world. See, my brother said it best. He said, Corey, if you would have gone to school and played basketball for four years, how many lives would you have inspired? Maybe a couple. It stinks you had the stroke, but look, man, you've had the chance to inspire hundreds and thousands of lives. And he couldn't be more right. I'm telling you, the best part about having my stroke, it happened to me for a reason, because I was strong enough to persevere. I try and answer these Facebook messages every day that I get from people all over the world telling me that they saw my story and it instilled hope in them to overcome the obstacle that they were facing or it just inspired them to spread, spread my story to help others. It made it all worth it. It was the greatest gift I was ever given, to be honest with you. Now today I talked a lot about the speed bumps that I faced, some of the obstacles throughout my journey, but I haven't showed you the exact first steps that I ever took. So here are the first steps that I ever took at the inpatient rehab facility all by myself. Just to show you where it all started. Okay, now when we're faced with obstacles, there's gonna be fear, there's gonna be doubt and uncertainty whether or not we're gonna be able to overcome those obstacles. Now I talked to you today about my first step, okay? So the question that I'm gonna leave you with is what will yours be? What will your first step be? Thank you, guys.